Hello everyone. Uh, as you know, this will be our last lesson on our series focusing on nature that we've been doing this summer. And I have a special activity for you to complete in celebration of this. And I'll tell you all about that at the end of the lesson. Um, as I also mentioned last week, today we'll be learning about a, another individual who has had a big impact on the environment. So last week we focused on how Wangari Mathai um, did this by planting trees. And this week we will learn about a guy named Pete who helped clean up the water of the Hudson River in New York. So here is his story as written by Janine Grossmeyer. In the month of July of 1969, a giant rocket was launched to space. It sailed through the darkness away from Earth and it carried three people to the moon, a quarter of a million miles away. And two people got out of the spaceship and walked on the moon. It was amazing. Through the ages, people have looked up at the moon and wondered what it would be like to go there. And finally, we actually had. People had walked on the moon. And it wasn't easy. We had come up with new ideas, figured out new ways of doing, and doing things and invented new techniques and built new machines. Thousands of people had to work together to make the trip to the moon happen, and we did. We made it happen. Now, there was another group of people working together to build a ship, and that was another amazing thing that happened in the month of July of 1969, but it wasn't quite so famous, so you might not have heard about this. Many people haven't, or maybe you have. Um, now, this ship was wasn't a spaceship full of new inventions. The group was building a sailing ship, built like the ships of old. Um, it was a sloop. So it had wooden beams and strong ropes and a towering mast that was over 100 feet high. Now this ship didn't go to the moon, of course, um, because it was a boat, but it sailed on the Hudson River, 142 miles away from the state capital of Albany, New York and down to the great port of New York City, and then back again. Now the ship didn't have thundering rockets or powerful thrusters. It had great white sails like the wings of a gull that caught the breeze and carried it forward on a whisper of the wind. The name of the ship was the Clearwater, and she still sails the Hudson River today. Thousands of people worked together to help build the Clearwater, but she started from the idea of just one man. His name was Pete, and he and his family had lived next to, the next to the Hudson River for years and years. When they first moved there after World War II, trees grew all along the banks, otters slid down the muddy slopes into the water, and fish swam in the river, birds nested in the trees. The Hudson was a living river. But as the years went by, people cut down some of the trees and put up oil tanks. They dumped old cars and made a junk heap right across from the river from Pete's house. People built factories up and down the river and they dumped chemicals into it. People built homes near the river and dumped their dirty water and their garbage into it. Every year, people kept cutting down more trees and dumping in more filth into the water of the river. After a while, the water got so dirty that the fish couldn't even survive and live there anymore. Um, and with the fish gone, the otters didn't have anything to eat. And with the trees gone, the birds didn't have any place to nest. So you remember how we talked about with many of these other lessons that we've done, how we're all, all these species are all so dependent on each other, right? So the Hudson River was no longer a living place and it was barely even alive. But Pete knew that this wasn't entirely correct. He knew the fish and the otters and the birds, he knew that it was wrong that this was happening. He knew the fish and the otters and the birds needed a place to live. He knew the trees shouldn't all be cut down, and he knew that the river should be a living place and that the water should run clear again. So he decided to make it happen. He knew the fish, um, he decided to build a ship like the greatest sailing ships and had traveled down the river a hundred years before then, back when the river was still clean and clear. And the ship would show people what had been and what could be again for the Hudson River. And that ship they christened the Clearwater. Pete knew he couldn't build a ship all by himself. It takes a lot of work, of course. It takes more than a dozen people just to sail it, so he knew he would need help. And he knew he couldn't clean up the river all by himself either. The Hudson is a very long river. 
and lots and lots of people live along it. So all of them, everyone would have to help. So Pete went to get help. He asked people, he wrote letters, he talked to people. But mostly what Pete did was sing to people. So this Pete that I'm referring to is Pete Seeger. And I hope you've heard of him. I had a piano student the other day that had never heard of Elvis, so that struck me. Um, so, and I'm a big fan of Pete Seeger in general. He's a folk singer and he'd been a singer and a songwriter all of his life. He sang at concerts and campouts and meetings and temples and chapels and churches. Um, and he, so he sang in many places and his songs were for everyone. And you probably know, if you, even if you don't know his name, you probably know a couple of his songs. So he wrote, if I had a hammer, I'd hammer in the morning. And he wrote, where have all, where have all the flowers gone? Long time passing. So you probably heard, maybe, I hope you've heard of those. There's another one you probably haven't heard of that I'm going to be doing, um, that we're gonna be singing at church this Sunday as our, as our second hymn. So, um, and that's one I wasn't familiar with before, but um, I'll share a link to the video with this, with this posting, with this video, and, uh, and then you'll get to hear it on Sunday at church too. So when he wrote many, many, many more songs, and you've probably sung a few of them at times, because Pete understood that music could bring people together. And so I love this. This is why I'm such a big fan of Pete Seeger's because he used, and other folk singers like him, because they used music to bring people together to enact change in positive ways. He knew that the words and the songs could help people see a better world. So Pete wrote songs about the river, about the water and about the trees and about what would have to be done in order to make the water clear again. He traveled all over singing these songs. People came from all over to hear him sing and to hear his music and they saw a better world through his songs. So they gave money to help build the ship Clearwater. $60,000 was collected from those concerts plus thousands of um, People sent in membership money for the Hudson River Sloop Restoration Group. And in July of 1969, um, four years after Pete first had this idea, and remember the same month that people first walked on the moon, the ship Clearwater was launched into the Hudson River. She slipped into the water and her sails caught the breeze like a, flying like a gull on the whisper of the wind. So less than a year later, in April of 1970, the Clearwater sailed down the Hudson River and out into the Atlantic Ocean, down past New Jersey and Delaware and Virginia, and into the Chesapeake Bay and up the Potomac River, uh, right to the capital of the United States, Washington, D.C. The Clearwater went to Washington for the very first Earth Day to help teach people about how to help keep our land clean and our water clear. Because the Clearwater is more than just a special ship. She is a special school. More than 10,000 people go on board her every year and sail on her. All kinds of people, not just kids. Old people, young people, big kids, little kids. And they learn all about the fish and the crabs and the water and the bubbles and the grass and all of the things that a living river needs to stay alive. Some of the teenagers help get to help sail the clear water to different places. They hoist the sails and tie ropes and scrub the decks and even get to sleep overnight on the ship. And often the people on visiting the ship on it as a school will sing songs just like sailors do and just like Pete Seeger does. People are still singing Pete Seeger's songs and the clear water is still sailing up and down the Hudson River, 142 miles to the state capital at Albany, down to the great port of New York City and back again. The Clearwater's done a good job, and people have done a good job. The Hudson River is now cleaner than it was all those many years ago when Pete first got the idea to build the Clearwater. The sky is cleaner, the land is cleaner too. Other rivers have become cleaner as well, but they're not as clean as they used to be a hundred years ago, not as clean as they could be um, or ought to be, but there's been some improvement. But that's our job, to make that happen, to make the lands, the water clear, the land clean and the air fresh, 
and it may not be easy. We'll have to come up with new ideas, figure out ways of doing things and invent techni new techniques and build new machines, and probably write a few new songs as well. And most importantly, millions of people will have to work together to make it happen. But we can do it. Um, after all, we've worked together before to make things happen. We went to the moon. That's crazy. It's an amazing thing. Who would have ever thought that could happen? But we've done it. So if we can do that, we can be good stewards of our Earth and help take care of it and restore it to how it should be so that all the plants, animals, and rivers could remain alive. You know, no one stayed on the moon. Everyone came home from the moon. No one lives there because it's just dry dust and dead rocks. There's no air, no water. The moon has no earth. And we need earth. We need earth to be a living place, our living place, with clean land and fresh air and clear water. Because the fish and otters and birds aren't the only one, ones who live here. We do as well. So Pete Seeger is a very powerful, was, was a very powerful voice for justice in our world and a good example of how we can be stewards of the world's water resources and have a good time doing it too, right? Because singing songs is a joyous thing to do. It doesn't have to be all um, drudgery. And he and his friends decided to act because their eyes were open to how the water was being poisoned and how that was affecting everything, all the plants and animals and fish um, and the humans that depended on the river. And they could see how this could get worse in the future and be so problematic for the health of the river ahead and for us as people in the future. Now, sometimes you might say that he was called to do this. And sometimes people say they feel called to do something or act in certain ways. So this means they feel there's a need for an action to happen and that they think they have a strong desire and they have a strong desire to address it and to take that action. So have you ever felt called to do anything? Um, it's something for you to think about um, after this lesson and on into the future. And this brings me to your special assignment. Um, as if this is the last series on nature, as I mentioned, at the top of the lesson, I have a special activity for you. So your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to write a letter. Pretty straightforward, right? But the twist is that you're writing a letter to yourself in the future. So this can be yourself a year from now, maybe three years from now, or five from years from now, or maybe all of the above. Um, and you will give your letters to your parents to give you when you reach the age to which you've addressed a letter. So the topic of the letter is about specifically how you plan to offer stewardship to the earth and its resources. What actions can you take that contribute to, that can contribute to helping, um, to helping the natural world? And if nothing is coming to mind immediately, it's okay, you can think about it a little bit and you might wanna think back to some of the things we've talked about in previous lessons. And as I've mentioned in previous lessons, you know, we all do things differently. You might not be an activist type that wants to get out there and, and, um, and march and make a fuss, but we all have things, our own skills and um, desires that we can bring to help enact positive change, whether it's for social justice, as we talked about last summer, or whether it's to help the environment. So think about how you could do that in you know whatever sort of I said a year or three years or five years or different increments and write that letter to yourself and and when you receive that letter from your younger self you can check in on how you've done with your pledge you can think of this letter as like a pledge of stewardship you can say you can write down okay this is what I'm going to do and you might not be able to achieve everything that you set out to do in that letter, and that's okay. But when you receive it, when you check in, you can use this letter to sort of check in where you're at. So you get your letter from your three year older self for years from now, and you can look at it and say, oh, well, I did that, but it, I could probably do better than that. So how can I increase my efforts to, to make that happen? Or maybe you'll find it, you know what? That's, I've discovered since then, that's not, that's not really the sort of thing that I'm good at, but I'm really good at this and I've learned that in time. So maybe I'll direct my efforts that way instead and really help over here. And if there's things that you've accomplished when you receive that letter, you can congratulate yourself on having been an active, active steward 
and you can continue to do so. So that is it for today. I will see you next time. Have a great week. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to the earth around you. Bye.